Tonight, you're joining us with Ms. Margaret Johnson from SOS to Wow, Breaking Barriers to Innovation. If you find yourself repeating the same old stuff, personally or professionally, it's time to break the cycle and feel and be well on your way. Margaret is gonna introduce a guide to busting your assumptions, unleashing your creativity, and teaching you how to take risks so you can make the move. Our presenter tonight utilizes her Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, her MBA, and a professional engineering license, and a esteemed coaching credential to inspire people and organizations to move from SOS to WOW. Please welcome tonight, Ms. Margaret Johnson. Margaret, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Rhonda. So life has a funny way of repeating itself. It seems like we wake up every day and it's like Groundhog Day, the movie Groundhog Day where Phil, Bill Murray wakes up every day and the whole day just repeats itself. I'm sure the last 18 months or even more that it kind of seems like that a little bit with our COVID lockdown pandemic, that, that things aren't changing much and here we go again through our day, whether we're at Zoom or whether at home uh, or in the office. And so what we would like to do is give you some tips and techniques to innovate, to move yourself from this same old stuff to well on the way so that you are no longer stuck, that your creative juices are flowing and that you are finding different ways to innovate, not just in your work environment, but also in your personal life. If you're going to get from SOS to WOW, you have got to change something. So what I'd like to ask each of you to do right now, and I think it is Mark is driving, so I don't know that you can do this. I think it was Mark or Kyle that said they were driving. But for the rest of you, if you're able to, I'd like you to physically change one thing about your appearance. So maybe if you have earrings on, you pull them out. If you don't have shoes on, you put them on. Uh, you can spin some things around, you can put things on your head, you can pick things up. But I'd like you to physically change one thing about your appearance. And I'd like you to try and keep that thing changed throughout the whole session. So one of the things I like to do is I like to take a ring from my right hand and push it over to the other hand. It's not comfortable for me, but I'm going to try and stay uncomfortable with that the whole hour. And let's see if you can do that too. Before we go, if I forget to check in on that, uh, I'm going to ask Alicia, is it Alicia, to go ahead and remind me before we go to check in on that and make sure you've changed something, okay? I don't want you to still be stuck in the same old stuff by the time the year ends. I want you to have some great ideas before you go. So what we're going to do is first look at which area of your life that you would like to move from. Where are you stuck? What is the same old stuff? And where would you like to be? How would you like things to look? So we'll define that first. Then we'll look at your motivation. So if it's at work and you're not uh, presenting ideas even though you have them, or maybe you are not getting any ideas because you're so, so stressed out or don't have any time to think. So what is your motivation for moving forward and getting yourself into a wow place? We will examine some different categories as far as our focus. Are we too focused? Are we not focused enough? Are the assumptions that we make about ourselves, other people, and situations holding us back? Do we think we're creative or not think we're creative? And that might be part of the problem. We'll explore a couple creative possibilities. And one of those is what if. The other is a creativity exercise to kind of get you out of the rut that you're in. We'll look at risk taking because if you don't change something, nothing is going to change. So if we have ideas, we've got to have the courage to move them forward. We've got to have the courage to speak up or to try something. And then we'll also lastly examine our self-talk and what we're saying to ourselves and how that might be holding us back. 
So the first thing I want you to think about is your SOS, where are you stuck? And it doesn't even have to be about innovation. It can be just kind of stuck in a certain place. Maybe it's in your career, maybe you're procrastinating about things. Maybe you can't get your ideas heard at work. Maybe you can't get your team to come up with anything creative. Maybe you can't get the executives to listen to new processes and new changes that might help. So I want you to first think about where are you stuck? What's preventing you from moving forward? What does your stuckness look like? So maybe you're, you know, battering heads <laughs> with some other people. So it's kind of a relationship connection, whether it's with your team or trying to move some ideas forward at any other level. Maybe you feel like you're alone, like you're working remotely. You're not getting to go into the office and collaborate and interact with people like you normally would. We're not in person right now for many of our organizational events. We're Zoom. So did you get here early enough to chat with any of the other people uh, in the room? Sometimes it can feel like we're alone on a path and that we've got to do everything by ourselves. I, I think personally lately, I, I felt like I've had to fix the whole world, all the things that are going wrong in the country. I feel like it's my responsibility. And I forget there are other people, other resources, and millions and billions of people helping us out. And the last picture I have here is a fellow climbing a rock wall. And there's a lot of different things that you could think about when you look at this as far as stuck, like it's just a total uphill battle. Um, also, maybe you don't have the right clothes, per se, the right resources, the right tools, the right processes in place to be able to move innovation or even get yourself out of a place that you're stuck personally. So those are, those are some pictures, some visuals for what being stuck might look like. What I'd like all of you to do is if you can see me, I hope you can see me. I know my driver can't see me, but I'd like you to take your right hand and bring your thumb and index finger together and bring your hand to your chin. Bring your hand to your chin. Now my driver probably has his hand on the chin, but some of you that are watching me probably have your hand stuck up here on your cheek. And you can put your hand down. It doesn't matter where your hand ended up. I know that when I first did this exercise, had it done to me, I kept saying to the guy, my hand's on my chin. Why do you keep repeating that? And here my hand was stuck up on my cheek. The point of that is, is a lot of us are very visual. You may find that when you're creating that you draw things out, that you like things explained with pictures. And that's why as a coach, as a speaker, as a keynote speaker, in a lot of my work, I utilize pictures. And so I'm going to show you some pictures here in just a second. And I want you to pick out from my slide, I'd like you to pick out one of the pictures that represents what it looks like for you right now, where your stuckness is. Maybe you're trying to hit some kind of target as far as new products or um, new ideas and you can't do that. Maybe it feels like you're stuck in a maze. If it feels like you guys are on a path right at work <laughs> and all of a sudden now you're off the road, stuck in the ditch on the side of the road. So take a peek at these pictures here. I'd like you to pick out one for what your stuck looks like and I'd love for you to share either in the chat or by um, unmuting yourself. If Rhonda can do that or I don't know if all of you are unmuted. And you can let us know what your picture is and what your stuck represents. I believe they can unmute. If you tell okay. them unmute, uh, raise your hand and I'll help you. Well, so what does your stuff look like? Your stuff look like at work or at home? Yeah, I'm not seeing a, a hand raise. So let's just go, let's go with the Second, row B, column two. How about that? Whatever that, that looks kind of interesting. Maybe for, if we look at it from an innovation standpoint, that would be our innovation ca catalyst, right? We heard Jan Schoen talking earlier about an innovation cal uh, catalyst really shining the light of innovation and trying to get other teams involved in incubating it and 
promulgating it and sustaining it and and it sounded like it would it would flow for a while and then ebb into non-existence so maybe we could talk about that okay we can use that as our sos so keep that in mind whatever your personal one is and also this one in uh, general that we brought up is being able to shine this light throughout the organization also to affect and influence people personally to help them solve their problems and make their life better that we want to be that light but right now we're struggling with that <laughs> so the second piece of this is i want you to look at and think about your wow what well on the way would look for you, look like for you so for me personally i'm struggling right now to write some of my books I've got so many choices of books that I want to write, and I'm not, as we'll get into the focus issue, I'm not focusing and narrowing it down to one, so I'm working a little bit on all of these different books, but I'm not getting any of them done, any of these new books. So my wow would be to actually have these books in print, completed, at least by Christmas to get the draft to the editor, right, so that they can go through that and start to get it ready for a reveal in the spring so that I can use them in my speeches that I can share all these different ideas to help other people get to wow and help them realize you know when they're stuck there there isn't just one answer there isn't just one path there's a lot of different ways and to help and influence and motivate them to kind of play with their creativity so they can come up with different ideas so maybe your wow is the whole organization, right, is in a boat together. You've all got different talents and skills. You're all working together. You're sharing ideas for improvement, for brand new products, for different directions for the company that will help you, your management, the other employees, the organization, and the world. So we're all going in one. And then any other boat you can see behind there, they're going in a different direction, but they look like they still have it all together, too. So we don't all have to go in the same direction, right? We might all be going off into different uh, directions with what we want to focus on. The picture to the left looks like this toolbox. I think sometimes we forget that we have so many other resources to assist us. There's trainings, there's meetings, there's uh, books and information, there's podcasts, there's experts out there, there's people that you work with, there's family that have ideas too. So we have a lot of resources. Some of them are tucked away. Maybe some of you, when you were decluttering during COVID, you found some of these resources and you've been able to work with those. But a wow would be to, to write out what all these resources are and start to utilize some of them more. And then also another way to innovate, I was just at a Women's Energy Network lunch yesterday. So women in oil, gas, power industry, anything energy related. And the speaker was from Microsoft Technology Center, and she focused on the new hybrid right workplace and what that looks like, what trends we have, uh, what we see is going on. And part of our social separation is one of the things that is holding back our innovation, that we're not in person connecting with people at different you know, meetings and sharing ideas, that we're not walking down the hall and bouncing ideas off of people, and that Innovation has really been hurt because of that. A lot of us aren't going to speak up in a Zoom meeting but we, or a WebEx meeting, but we might be more apt to if we were in person. So a focus can be just this time and the way that things have changed have really stifled uh, innovation a little bit. And if we can first be aware of that and then kind of work on some of those things that have been holding us back, could be holding us back, I think we'll get back to that place where ideas are flowing, we're all in our groove again. So for you, and you don't have to share again, I know some of you were shy to share what your SOS was, but I'd like you to take a peek now at this slide with the different ideas on what your wow might look like. So maybe money's just flowing. <laughs> and it's probably foreign currency, so from all sorts of different countries into your business, right? Maybe there's progress on the home there, so there's progress on these projects or things we're trying to build. Uh, we have some people all working together. Uh, we've got the raspberry. I don't think it's a cherry on top of the ice cream sundae. So maybe you're almost there. And the cherry on top would be to have this idea actually become a new thing, either in the world or in, in, in your company or in your home. So take a peek again at some of these pictures and see if visually you can represent what your wow would look like.
Any comments on that? One of these pictures resonate with you? I'm not seeing any comments in the, <laughs> coming from the chat, to be honest. Okay, that's okay. I'm not seeing a reaction either. Let's, how about if we go with, let's go with this building construction, right? So I think if we go, if we go with the same theme that we had for Wan Shun earlier, she talked about really how do we build an architect an innovation program that's sustainable in the mid and the long term instead of hitting that innovation wall with lack of building innovation champions across the broader spectrum of the organization. So how about if we go D4? Okay. So I like that, the construction, the building of this. Uh, I mean, there's going to be some things that might fall apart along the way, hopefully not anything serious that we can't fix. Before that final inspection, right, we always find some little things that need to be fixed before we can move forward. And um, yes, I think that's a great visual and a great um, idea and picture to have in our head as we move forward. So I do want you to think individually about each area of your life and where you might be stuck. Think of something personal where, where you'd like some more ideas. Think of something professional where you'd like to make some big changes. Maybe work is your main focus for this right now. So that as we go through a couple of these principles, then you have some things you can apply directly to that. The next step is now that you've got this in mind, you know, how do you get yourself to move from there? I mean, sometimes we've been beat down so many times at work um, that we don't want to try, well, it's not going to matter, they're not going to listen to my ideas, right? <laughs> they told me no so many times. Or they say, well, this process has been working, so, um, you know, we don't want to change this. So, depending on how things are going, we could have been, been beaten down. But let's think about some of the things that do motivate us to move forward. So, some of you, most of you probably already done a personality style assessment before in your life, maybe it's Meyer Briggs, maybe it's DISC, maybe it's Animals, Colors, there's Insights, there's so many different ones out there. But the main premise of the personality styles is breaking you into four main categories that have been broken down into 16. And it's something that can help us get started and understand people, but not something that we use to keep people set in a box. So if you are if the left corner, upper left corner, describes you, the pioneer, these people are more assertive but less expressive about their ideas, all right, or their direction. They're kind of quiet as they're thinking. They like to take charge. They're very competitive. Uh, they might not listen really well because they're just waiting for you to get to the point. So as far as when we look at our innovation and our motivation styles, this person might be motivated to innovate, to to speak up, to make some changes, if they see the possibility of results, if there's competition between, you know, one area and a different area for how many ideas, how many ideas can actually make it all the way through to fruition. So you want to think about your style and what's going to motivate you to actually do something. If you've got a team that you're trying to get to be more um, innovative, then you want to think about the team members and what might get them to uh, get going. So the upper right-hand corner is a group called the Wheeler Dealers that are more assertive and more expressive. Their strengths are they're very um, excited and spontaneous. They may, may tend to exaggerate, but this can be very good in a brainstorming or some other types of activities to innovate. Well, what would happen with them is they'll kind of like, okay, we need to uh, bring the team together and find different ways that we can brainstorm better because our brainstorming techniques aren't producing anything. So the Wheeler dealer will exaggerate and go, well, you can fly us all to, you know, the top of uh, some mountain out in Colorado or, you know, Mount Fiji or wherever, and we can all hike and when we get to the top, we'll drink 12 packs of beer and we'll come up with some ideas. So they're exaggerating in something over dramatic that sounds crazy. But that kind of gets you to think, okay, well, that's crazy, but I think we could step back from that and go to a different environment than we've been trying to work in the office or, you know, remotely in a Zoom meeting, put ourselves in a different kind of environment, and that might inspire 
creative ideas. So that's where the wheeler dealer can help with that. The systems thinker is very process oriented. They're the kind of person that's going to make sure you go through the steps. And so maybe there's some steps that some of your organizations are missing as you try to innovate. And then the captain caution is more low, lower on assertiveness, but higher on expressiveness as far as emotion and connection. And they're the ones that bring the team together. Um, are always thinking about, you know, well, so and so's been very quiet, so let me kind of um, check into what's going on in there, see if I can get them to connect. So each of these different personality styles has something that they bring to the uh, innovation, the creativity, the risk taking realm. And we want to involve all of them in the different ways that they can contribute, but we also want to think about ourselves. And, you know, for me personally, when I want to motivate myself, it's something that has to be fun, right? It also has to have some really strong results and be a very big goal. So I'm a pioneer wheeler dealer combination. And if I can do that, then I start to come up with some ideas and actually move forward. The other thing I think I want you to think about is your values. I want you to look at your organization, look at yourself, look at the people you deal with, look at the community that you are trying to present or send a, um, a product or something out into the world, and what's important to them. So I know that for innovation, some of the car companies were just watching people. You ever seen a person with a bunch of groceries or big packages trying to get into their car, right? And they might do things with their foot. So the car companies became innovative and had a, instead of something you do with your hand, right? As long as you had the key on you, you could use your foot to open up the tailgate or open up something. So by watching people, understanding what was important to them, they were able to innovate. So I want you right now to think about yourself and some of the things that are important to you. You know, what is the most important? So when we think about our values, it's what maybe drives us. What is our compass, our moral compass, right? It's uh, when I have to make a decision, what do I take into consideration? So I want you to, now here I just have a short list. I mean, there are hundreds if not thousands of different things you could have for your values. And I'd like for you to pick out three for yourself and once you've got those, put those in the chat what they are. So for me, it's family and personal freedom and fun. I also like accomplishment, so it's hard to stop with three for me. <laughs> but I'd like you to write down what, what is most important to you. What do you value? Have you thought about how that connects to what is important with the company, to the company? If you thought about that in connection with what you value and what your family or other people you're trying to influence value. So are we getting anyone writing that in the chat, Rhonda? Not quite yet. There might be in process. Give it just a second. Okay. Margaret. And remember when you think about values, it's okay if you're not Collaboration, okay, I see some answers coming in. It doesn't, excellence. Just because you're not honoring that right now doesn't mean that it's not important to you. So maybe family is really important, but you've got so much work right now. We've got minded excellence, learning open-minded excellence. Or maybe it was three, learning, open-minded, and excellence. I didn't put the pause in there. <laughs> okay, good. So how can this be used for innovation? How can we get our ideas heard? How can we break down some barriers for two people listening to us? When I was in technical sales, the CEO of the company would go up and down the hallway sometimes when he was in town. And he would always ask us, are you making more money? You got, you know, you're making more money today. What are you doing to make the company money? And then, so it's pretty obvious that what he valued was making money for the company, right? And were we providing value and making money? And so I had some ideas on how our organization, the technical sales group I was in, could perform better, could offer better services. I had different ideas for the whole company as a whole. But the CEO isn't going to listen to me, right? I'm just a contract sales lady. 
And what I did one day, as I was walking down the hallway, he was coming the other direction, and I just said to him, as he passed, I said, hey, uh, Don, I've got some ideas on how we can make some more money. If you want to hear them, let me know. And I kept on walking. He kind of flipped around like a 180, <laughs> stopped me, and told me to get some time on his schedule with his assistant. And I ended up with a whole hour. So a lot of times we have ideas that aren't getting heard. That can be a barrier for innovation. But if you connect to what's important to you, what's important to the organization, what's important to your bosses, the key uh, stakeholders, then if that's where your focus is when you're presenting the idea, it's going to be more apt to be heard. So think about that as you, okay, management always prioritizes more on the idea itself. Oops, that flipped by me too fast to read the whole thing, okay. Management always prioritizes return on investment more on the idea itself, which is quite frustrating at times, okay. So um, I think one of the things you can look at, though, maybe look at some of the, those ideas that didn't make it very far and look at was there a value connect or disconnect? Maybe if they're looking just at return on investment, it's uh, be helpful to have a little more uh, a little more discussion around the other value that the idea brings. There's a formula that I hadn't planned on covering, but I'd like to share with you, and it's called like, concern, suggest. So this LCS formula, as I remember learning it many, many years ago when I was a young engineer and an, an innovative company came to the office and did some creativity, um, you know, idea innovation kind of work with us. And this formula stuck with me and I've seen it in project management before too. So the first part of it is whenever an idea is presented, you think about or look at what is it that you like about it? What concerns you about it? And what suggestions do you have? So our initial reaction sometimes is just to turn a whole idea down. And so management is probably turning, because it doesn't have return on investment, <laughs> they're turning the whole idea down, right? But if you can ask them, well, what do you like about it? What parts of it might be possible or might be, um, you know, something that you see possibility in? And then you add, delve into what concerns do you have? What might make you not want to go forward with this, and then ask for some suggestions. So following that formula is pulling out of people when they say no. When they say no, it's usually not the whole idea that they don't like, there's just a piece of it. So if you can find out what their concerns are, and then they can make suggestions or you can ask for suggestions or have some more of a conversation around it, I think you might be able to get a little bit farther with your ideas. So what are you thinking about this formula? Um, have you used something like that before? Do you think that might be helpful to you going forward with some of these ideas that aren't making it past the drawing board? Well, Margaret, they're saying that your formula and, and really basing it on this value concept and really helping people move to that place of value realization is extremely helpful for them. So thank you. Great. Great. I had an hour with the CEO and he actually went forward with some of my ideas. So I don't know if I did that by accident or I just used that um, now that I saw how it worked before. So that can be, I think that can be helpful for people. Okay. So how are we going to get from SOS to WOW? Uh, let's look at some specific strategies. The first one has to do with focus. What I'd like you to do right now, and I know some of you can't because you're driving, you might not be in a place that you can write. You, so you can just imagine what this exercise would be like. But what I'd like you to do is I want you to write down the numbers 1 through 26. And then I want you to write the alphabet A through Z. But when you write it, 
I want you to write down the number one and then put your pen down, or if you're on the computer, take your hands off the keyboard. <laughs> And then go back to the keyboard or pick your pen up and flip your paper over and write A. And then put your pen down and flip the paper back and write the number two. Put your pen down, pick your paper up, flip your paper over, pick your pen back up, write B. So you're alternating one, A, two, B, three, C. Opposite sides of the paper, the pen is going up and down on each part of that. Uh, if you don't have paper and pen, you could do it on a keyboard. And if you can't do either of those right now, I want you to just imagine yourself doing that. And as you're doing that, how long do you think it's going to take you to go through the alphabet and all of those numbers? Just a guess. How long do you think it would take you? Going back and forth like that. Three to five minutes, somebody says. Okay, some of you might actually be doing it, and if you are doing it, you're probably still doing it, right? I mean, I want to stay friends with you. I don't want you to hate me, but <laughs> a lot of times I, when I'm in person with people, I actually have them do it. It's kind of fun, and then there's a second part to it. What I do is I have you write down all the numbers, 1 through 26, all the letters, A through Z, without stopping, without putting your pen down, without flipping the paper over. How long do you think it would take you to do that if you didn't have to stop and flip and drop and pick up? So we had three to five minutes on the torture process. How long do you think it would take to just run through that? Some of you are doing that right now and you've already finished it. 60 seconds max, yeah, thank you. And that's pretty much the difference between that, a couple minutes to do it the interrupted way and uh, even I've seen 30, 20 seconds to do it the uninterrupted way. And the point of that is I like to have people kind of work through that a little bit just so they remember. But part of our trouble of going forward a lot of times with creating is that we are not focusing, right? We are so interrupted all day long. If you're home, there's a lot of interruptions. If you're in the office, there can be a lot of different interruptions. Emails come in, you pay attention to it, someone calls, someone texts. And it takes us 15 minutes or so to get back into our flow. So when we were trying to work on some new idea or create something, uh, we lost our connection to that every time we are interrupted. So part of that, our problem can be that we are not staying focused on something. If that's an issue for you, there's a technique called Pomodoro technique, like the um, Italian word for Pomodoro technique, Italian word for tomato. And if you go to pomodorotechnique.com, there's like a two-minute video that shows you the process. I actually have a free app on my phone that does the timer. So it sets the timer for 25 minutes where you focus on one project, one thing, one brainstorm session. And then at 25 minutes, you take a five-minute break, and you do that four times and then take a longer break. But on those 25 minutes, you don't answer a text, you don't check an email, you don't answer the phone, you just let people know I'm you know, I get back with you at this time. You write down the things that you think you have to do that you're not going to go do right now. And they found that this is very effective work process for some people. So if that's your issue, that might be helpful to you. The other piece of focus, all right, so I told you I've got too many books. I've actually got 50 books on my list of books I want to write. How am I ever going to get a book done? I mean, I finally picked from SOS to WOW and got one book written, but I'm having that same dilemma again, right? I have another topic called infobesity, the cure, and that's the overwhelm of all this information, decisions, you know, things, the options that we have, choices to make, and how to cure yourself of that. But the other piece of this focus is that sometimes we can be um, too focused. I had an executive, I was working with their executive search company as a coach and a trainer, and uh, I went in to talk with him one day, and he was complaining about an airline company. And he was so focused on his problem and the trouble he had, and he wrote to the CEO or called him of the airline company, and they said, we're working on it. I guess they were going through a merger. And I told him, I said, you are so focused on your problem that you didn't even think about, here's this company, this corporation, this airline company, that you could help solve their problem. You just missed out on an opportunity for a consulting uh, work. 
So some of us can be so focused on one thing, we don't see some other things around us. And before we go, we'll do that, uh, that focus exercise, that self-talk, so that we'll kind of uh, talk about how we can open our eyes to other possibilities. And the last part of focus is, is there's something called slow motion, uh, slow motion multitasking, right? We're not really multitasking, we're switch tax, tax, tasking, excuse me. So experts like Einstein and Edison used to do this. They'd be working on a problem, like you're trying to solve something, you're trying to create, you're trying to innovate, you're trying to force people to brainstorm, you know, in the middle of the afternoon when <laughs> their brains aren't ready for that. And what they do is when they got into an issue with something and couldn't make any progress, they left that project and went and worked on something else. Their brain kind of freed up, even though in the back of their head they were still thinking about this first project and they were working on another project and they came up with ideas of how to solve the first issue. So I encourage you to stop switch tasking so fast and maybe go into this slow motion. When you get stuck on a project, we'll think about something else, let your brain relax, or if you need to, get into the Pomodoro technique. So that might help um, some of you that are too interrupted, okay. Yeah, I have a little story on the um, on the slide right here. I'll read it to those. I'll read it to those um, of you that can't read it right now. So the short story is: if you don't know, you don't know. A businessman has just turned off the lights in the store when a man appeared and demanded money. The owner opened a cash register. The contents of the cash register were scooped up and the man sped away. A member of the police force was notified promptly. So I'm going to leave it up there. I have a few questions for you and all I want to know from you, is it true, is it false, or do you not know? Is it true, is it false, or do you not know the answer? So the first statement I have for you is a man appeared after the owner had turned off the store lights. A man appeared after the owner had turned off the store light. Is that true? Is that false? Or do you not know? You can put that in the chat or unmute. That's true, false, or don't know. A man appeared after the owner turned off the store light. Don't know. I got some answers coming in the chat. And the first one I thought was don't know, and that is correct. Nowhere does it state that the man who turned off the light was the owner, okay? So we don't know if the businessman was the owner. Okay, the second one is the robber was a man. We don't know, true or false, or we don't know. The owner was a man. Don't know is the answer I'm getting again. That is correct. We do not know. All right, how about this last one? Someone open a cash register. True, false, or we don't know. Someone opened a cash register. True. <laughs> Who's ever answering these questions? You've got a perfect 100. <laughs> okay. I mean, if we kept going through all the statements I have, the majority of them are we don't know. And I think that that is what truly happens with we read a story, we fill in the blanks, we think we've got the answer to everything. And um, in actuality, we made some assumptions. Our brain made some assumptions. So this happens with everything. We observe some data, we have some experiences, we select data from what we observe, we make assumptions based on the meanings we add to that, and then we have conclusions. Um, these become our beliefs about the world, and we take action based on these beliefs. So this is true for everyone. You know, we were raised in different ways, and uh, all those things kind of stick with us. We've seen different things. We've had different experiences, and our head goes right to that place of something that's familiar. Our brain's trying to be efficient. And so we have told ourselves a lot of things. And one of the things that a lot of us – oh, I did have that there <laughs> – one of the things that we have told ourselves, right, a lot of people have told themselves is they're not creative. I have no creative ideas. I'm not creative. Um, I'd like you to share with us some of the assumptions that you think people hold that are, are barriers right now to their innovation. 
like, oh, well, we can't get together in person, so we're not going to be able to be innovative. Or brainstorming sessions don't work on Zoom. Or, you know, most people aren't creative, so we're not going to be able to think of anything. So tell me some of the assumptions that you hold or you think other people might hold around creativity, innovation, and moving things forward at work. Not enough money to do things. People don't want to hear our ideas. Don't have the time. Thank you, Mark. Other assumptions, okay, we don't, don't know what works best. There's no way we can figure it out. We can't just guess on things. Don't have someone to lead the session with the right skills, okay. And what happens because we think these things, then we don't do anything. Right? I've got some friends, you know, oh, I'm not very, no experience seeing it work. Okay, so I've never seen it anywhere, work anywhere else, so I don't think it's going to work. Um, <laughs> I'm not being measured on this. <laughs> I'm not being measured on this, and I can't do it, I'm not going to do it, or it's not going to matter. So there are a lot of stories we tell ourselves. I think the biggest one is people think they're not creative. Uh, there's no tie into strategy or values, so it's not of any use, but I think a lot of times we can find a way to tie some things into those. But what happens most of the time is because we believe this story, we believe this assumption, we don't take any action. And so I want you to think about that when you start telling yourself some things or other people start telling you some things like this. You know, if it wasn't true, how would you act differently? Um, I think sometimes people you know, think there's no time to be creative. But one of the, I'd like to hear from y'all, one of the, where are your best times to be creative? I mean, I tell you, when I go in the shower, right, <laughs> that's when you're relaxed. You don't have to think about how to shampoo my hair, right, or anything like that, or wash my nose or anything. I don't have to think about it, so my brain kind of relaxes. And I came out of the shower with all these ideas. I have to run to a pad of paper. What I have discovered is um, there's a thing called shower notes that have suction cups and the paper works and the pencil actually works in the shower and you can write all of these creative ideas down in the shower. So, guilty by association, okay. So, I want you to kind of, what is your best over the dinner table, right? Some of you might be runners or, you know, whenever I'm doing something, walk in the park, that's a good time for me to be creative. So, it doesn't always take a lot of time. It doesn't have to be um, something that is formal. It just, if we gave ourselves some quiet time, right, then we could come up with some ideas. There's one other thing that I've seen some companies do. They have what's called a what if, and they put this, they put this uh, sign like in the cafeteria or whatever. You know, what if there was no budgetary limits? And then they just let people kind of write their answers. You know, what if we had, what if we didn't need to sleep? You know, <laughs> what if we could get into the brains of every con customer consumer out in the world, right? What if, what would, you know, so by doing this, they're kind of sparking some innovation just in that. And I've done that when I was working with the Economic Development uh, Council, a number of the different councils in the Houston, greater Houston area. And we did a what if they were trying to come up with some projects uh, for innovation in economic development. And we did some what ifs and they came up with some really good ideas. So that might be something that you can use. I'd like to share before we get into the risk taking and doing something is a creativity exercise uh, that has to do with random words. So on the chart up here, if you have a piece of paper or your computer, or your laptop, you know, your iPad, anything, I would like you to write down these words, bridge, envelope, pocket, bread, ladder, cyclone. Bridge, envelope, pocket, bread, ladder, and cyclone. And then right next to them, I want you to write down the first thing that comes to mind when you think of that. So when I think of a bridge, I think of the Golden Gate Bridge. I think of San Francisco. I think of Michigan and Mackinac Island. I think of engineering. I'm an engineer. 
when I think of envelope, I think of money, because when I go to the bank, they always give me my cash out in an envelope. And so if you can't write anything down right now, I just want you to take one word like bread or bridge or pocket and just kind of think about some of the things that come to mind for you, okay? So you don't have to fill in the whole chart, but just at least write down a few random words that come to mind when you think of those things. Now, next time you look up, if you have filled in your chart with all the, oh, build back better infrastructure, when you come back, uh, look back up. If you have all the same words in your chart that I do, you get a prize. So please let Rhonda know that your chart mess, uh, matches mine. Cyclone equal risk, okay. A lot of these are connected to, yes, innovation. So how would you use something like this? So we uh, won't go deep into this. If we were in a workshop, we would spend some more time. Oh, ladder, like, I like that progress. But I want to share this exercise so that you might be able to use this in your brainstorming sessions or at work when people are stuck or even in your own personal lives. When you get stuck, I've used this with my kids. So there was a problem in the Northwest with ice on power lines, bread equal carbs. <laughs> I didn't realize how many carbs are in vegetables, too. Um, but uh, there was ice on the power lines. I'm a power industry girl, so this was interesting to me. And this would always, you know, cause lots of problems. It would cause outages and lines down, everything. So they came, brought a group of people to a hotel to try and figure out how to um, solve this problem. And they let the people go out at the hotel into the gift shop and the golf course and in the woods and all that. And they asked them to pick up five things, pay for it if they went in the gift shop, and bring the things back. And then they did this same exercise. But they wrote down the things that they had collected on their journey. And one of the guys had picked up some honey in the gift shop. So his word for the chart was honey, and he had Winnie the Pooh and Bear and, you know, things like that. Well, then they looked at their problem. How can we solve ice on the power line? And they just used the random words from the chart to solve the problem because their minds had been stuck, you know, on a path, and we wanted to get them out of that path and thinking more creatively. So they um, were thrown, you know, one guy says, well, you could put bear, uh, you could put the honey on top of a power pole, and the bears would smell it, and they'd come a-running, and when they climbed up the power pole to get the honey, the power poles are shaken, and as the poles are shaken, the, the lines are shaken, and the ice comes off. Well, you can't use bears to solve the problem, but they came up with helicopters, actually, to fly over the lines, which shook the lines, which knocked the ice off. So they were able to solve it. So we're not going to get into this because of time, but I want you to think about this when you get stuck, whether, um, you know, you're in a brainstorming session or you just switch yourself and need some new ideas, it'll take your head in a different place from where you've been stuck in following a path, right? And it'll get you to open up your creativity and possibly come up with some um, different ideas that you hadn't thought of. And like I mentioned, right, the um, one personality style that's really out there, they'll come up with the crazy thing, the bear and the honey at the pole. Um, but then that made people think of vibration that actually solved the problem. So that is one way to get your creative brains open. So the last thought here before we look at our mindset is if you don't do anything, if you don't speak up, if you don't try to connect to values, if you don't make any changes from, you know, how you were doing things to how you do things after our talk, my talk, right, nothing changes. So risk, inaction is a risk. And then as just as much as taking some action can be. So we're talking about doing something. I want to check in with all of you that changed something. If anyone not changed their, um, you know, if you put your ring, I haven't changed my ring back to my other hand. If you did not change your thing back, I want you to put your name in the chat. If you did not change that. We have anybody that didn't change back? I'm not seeing. Because if you didn't change back, I'm going to ask you to send your um, address to Rhonda so I can send you a goodie bag. And the point of that is, is when you hear some training, you go to some session, you get some ideas, it sounds really good. 
But after, okay, good. So Mark, I'm going to send your address to Rhonda so I can send a goodie bag to you. Um, the point of that is, is that, you know, Mark stuck with something that was uncomfortable, right? And that's what we want you to try and do is when you make a change, use random words, use the LCS formula, think about assumptions, you know, what is your SOS and wow. If you do something different, things will change. It can be a little uncomfortable at first, but you will end up in a better place. So the risk taking, I actually have a creativity and risk taking assessment I work with clients on that you can become more of a risk taker and become more creative. But this little short process here is looking at, you already have your SOS to wow goal where you wanna be. You look at ways to accomplish that goal, uh, depending on what kind of a risk taker you are. You know, if you're a baby stepper, then you might need to take small steps. If you're a run like a bat out of hell kind of crazy person, well, then you might take bigger steps. But you can always increase your possibility of success by talking with people, by doing some prototypes, by, you know, practicing a conversation with someone. You can call me up and practice with me. But the point is you're going to need to take, make a change and take a risk, right? So just sharing this quote uh, with you, for better it is to dare mighty things with glorious triumph, even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy nor suffer more because they live in a gray twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. Okay. So the last thing I want you to do, um, we'll take questions in just a minute, but I want you to Make a list of all the things that you don't want to happen in reference to your SOS to WOW. So mine would be, I don't want my um, books to be unwritten. <laughs> I, I don't want to, um, you know, if I get the book written, I want them to sell. I don't want them to sit, you know, in my office piling up because no one wants to hear it, um, hear my information or share. So those might be some things I don't want to happen. And then you write the exact opposite next to that list of, oh, I want my book to be a bestseller. You know, I want my, um, my stockpile to be sold out every week. I want people's lives to change for the positive just from reading my book and hearing my talk. So I want you to make a little list. You can do this for homework or write some things down now is what do you want to happen with your SOS to wow and innovation? Um, you know, what do you, how you, Maybe it's something different at work. Maybe it's something different personally. Where um, and how would that look, right? Then I want you to just focus on what you do want. Just look at the list of things that you do want, not look at the things you don't want. Maybe meditate it over it in the morning or um, in the evening, but at least look at it every day, not as a list of things to do, but keep in mind what you want. And I trust that things will change in a positive way for you. So there's a game that I played as a kid in the car because there was eight of us kids and we drove everywhere called Punch Bug Slug Bug. And when uh, we saw a Volkswagen Beetle car, you'd scream out, Punch Bug Slug Bug, whatever color it was, gray, purple, orange, yellow. And you'd gently punch your brother or sister in the arm. And then you won that one. And then you went on to play the game. But the point was those beetle bugs were in the parking lot and on the freeways before we started that game, but we didn't notice them. And as soon as we started playing the game, we started to notice them, we saw them everywhere. And that's what I think will happen for you with your do want list, that you were thinking about all the things you didn't want. If you focus on what you do want, I think you'll see some more opportunities. And that's the same thing that's gonna happen with any what is your company's looking at, um, any ideas that you wanna try and press through if you look at what you do want and how you want things to turn out instead of focusing on how things aren't working, I think you'll have more success in innovation and break some barriers down. So we still have a few minutes to answer any questions for you. I know I kind of talked fast there at the last to get you into that do want, don't want exercise, but um, what questions do you have or what part of this do you think is going to be most helpful to you? I know some of you mentioned earlier the values part. Well, how about this question, Margaret? So I think you talked about really this team style. So if we're looking at our earlier question about how to sustain innovation, it seems like that team has to be balanced and it has to have the right rules. How can you advise us please on how you've seen that done right? 
I've actually seen a lot of teams that naturally have a little bit of every kind of style in them. In fact, most of us can flex a little bit. So you kind of want that person that's always going to challenge things, right? Because that's the person that lets you know, I mean, that points out what could go wrong and what could go right. Um, you want the creative person with the crazy ideas so that there's more ideas being thrown out there, uh, even though people will um, kind of like, well, that's not practical, da 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 but we could use that like, concern, suggest formula. I think if you have the opportunity to put a team together and plan it, that you want to look for strong personalities in the different areas, like one person that's really focused on um, consideration as far as making sure everyone speaks and has a chance to talk and uh, we hear ideas from everyone. One person who uh, helps everybody follow the process. Another person who, um, you know, is, is focusing on results and, you know, what can this do for, you know, the bottom line. And this fourth person that may be more creative and crazy and idea suggesting. So the people tend to flex on all those. So if you can actually formulate a group, um, I think you can naturally kind of get a feel for those kind of styles. But I think most of the time when your group is thrown together to brainstorm and work together, you naturally get a little bit of all of that in there. So um, getting to know people and bringing that out and making sure there's actually a book called The Six Thinking Hats by Edward de Bono, The Six Thinking Hats. And he has that strategy for decision making, which includes looking at, okay, well, somebody to coordinate the effort, right, the blue hat, follow the process, somebody that looks at, you know, what will work and what won't work, somebody that makes sure we're getting ideas to flow, um, somebody making the plan of how to move forward. So the De Bono Six Thinking Hats book um, is a good resource for that. But like I said, you can put your team together on purpose, but I think a lot of teams actually end up having a lot of that um, naturally. Thank you so much, Margaret. I can't, okay, how about the next one? I think also Yon Chun kind of spearheaded the beginning of this conversation early on too. And for those teams where you just have this disparate amount of voice, with regard to observations about innovation and creativity, or they're a little shy, or they've never done that before. What exercise have you seen that really helps pull people out of their current mindset or state and helps them shift so they're more willing to participate fully? I think sometimes the simplest little activities that make them forget about work um, there's actually a course, I, a one-day course I took was all Legos, and the whole class was, we just answered questions by creating structures out of Legos. So I think if you can take it from something that's work-related and they feel like pressure, but give them something that is so non-work-related that they're able to play in a way, I think uh, that a lot of that can relax. You know, sometimes you've seen a team try and build a tower you know, out of paper and straws and whatever, who can build the tall, tallest tower. And it gets people getting creative without having to think about a work thing. So if you can get some exercises like that where you just play for a little bit and then people will see a success, and then maybe you can start to play with like the random word thing to solve simple problems. Even something as simple as, you know, I've had a session where um, with the Society of Women Engineers, I did leadership lessons from the yoga mat. And um, one of the creativity exercises was how many different things can you do with a yoga mat? You know, what uses would you have? And so that kind of just threw them into this playful place of, you know, what else can I use a yoga mat for? And we got really creative and they're like, look, see, you came up with 100 and, you know, whatever, or 25 ideas. So you are creative. So stop thinking you aren't. So little things like that that can give people a little bit of success that gets them to um, realize that they actually can be creative, I think they'd be more apt to then speak up when you start to get into uh, more practical work-related issues. Well, thank you so very much.
any additional questions in the chat right now. So if it's okay with you, I think we are at time and we would like to close our session for tonight. So again, hey, great. thank you to all of our attendees. Thank you to Margaret for a phenomenal session this evening. We will plan on posting her information to our My ASQ and start a discussion on this topic. So we will email you how you can continue the conversation with Margaret. And we'd like to invite you to our last event of the season to be held 1216 at 7 p.m. with Miss Leslie Martinet. And that will be how to manage your star performers and how to innovate the competition. Thank you all again for being here this evening. We so appreciate your attendance and for making Margaret welcome and all of your participation. Thank you so much. And thank you and we wish you a safe, happy and healthy Thanksgiving and seasonal holidays. Again, thank you, Margaret, and thank you for our attendees. Good night. Good night.